So I booked booked the optician for two weeks on Thursday. Had my eyes checked. I feel like they'll be fine, but I've had the same glasses since year nine. So who knows? Yeah. I feel like a frame change. Although I don't know if you've seen Zara McDermott's glasses are really nice as well. So I might come out with them. What does she what are hers like? They're like really skinny frame, but like same sort of shape to like mine are currently and yours are. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like a nice brown edging and they just look really sleek. Interesting. Which we love. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Im. And I'm Evie and this is our podcast, Let's, Let's Be, Be Honest. Honest. Don't forget you can find our podcast on all your usual streaming platforms and feel free to leave us a review just to see how we're doing. You can also watch us on YouTube at Im and Evie if your heart so desires to see our faces. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Im and Evie to keep up with everything we're doing. So how are we doing this week? We're doing okay, actually. Better than last week. Um, Woo! Yeah, I know. Progress. Um, I mean, we're in February, so that is like... That Such is progress in itself. Forward. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm just applying for jobs. I've found some more film and TV jobs. So I've been applying for those, but the applications take quite a while. Oh, for um, sure. I hated the application process. Mm-hmm. And you feel like the only way I can, like kind of compare is when you write your um university like this is why you should let me into university letter it's the same sort of vibe but for jobs and you're just like this is just not who I am I know I know I feel like there's more riding on jobs because you're like I need an income I want like especially because now we're out of education like we literally have no like I'm not going to do a master's so you know oh my god stop it's those conversations when you do when we eventually get back to them at family gatherings where it's like so what are you doing now and you're like do you just want me to hold up a plaque just hand around some pamphlets to update you all so you don't ask me the same question I know I know (laughs) how are you doing though how's your week been my week has been really busy but like super productive so we're loving that nice so I think it would be a good time for, we're going to do an icebreaker first, I think, because that's kind of the reason of an icebreaker. Yeah. Um, so the topic this week is... Drum roll. <laughs> University. <laughs> Which we love. Yeah. Um, so it's a very university-based um, kind of icebreaker. Um, okay. Would you rather go to university in America or the UK? Okay. <sighs> Where do we begin? Um, first of all, are we talking w- which I prefer as like an education system? Or are we just Ooh. talking about which I'd rather go to? I think just like generalise. Okay, so I obviously... We both went to university in England. We did four years. Or did you do three years? I did three. I did three. It just feels like four because I did four and I just feel like you were with (laughs) me the whole time. Um, (laughs) But we both went to uni in England. So that was our degree. But I also did a semester in America at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. Shout out. Um, So, and I found it very different. So the the workload this is going to be also really interesting because one of our best friends maddie listens and watches our podcast and she is american and she went to belmont university that's how i met her and Mm -hmm. she also did a semester abroad in england and she's also coming over to england to do her masters so this would have been a good one to get maddie involved in the podcast oh my word so true we can always do like a. I feel like we know her. her answer yeah, we if do. she's coming to the UK, <laughs> then we know that she she kind of likes UK a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, right. I'm trying to think where sh- where do I even begin with this? Let's talk about like workload because. Okay. Okay, so let me give you my answer first to the icebreaker. <laughs> my answer would be, and again, it is difficult to give a complete answer. Um, remember mm-hmm. when I said I overthink things? Um, <laughs> it's like taking forever to answer this. Um, because obviously we did four years in England at uni and I only did five months in America at uni. So it's kind of hard to judge. Yeah. Um, but I would say 
England uni, I prefer, I would rather do four years again than four years in America. Okay. Purely because I did film and TV at uni and I knew that's what I wanted to go into. Whereas at in America, so I went in my third year and yeah. all, most of my friends, like Maddie was in her third year um, and Hannah and other people, and they were still studying subjects that were not based on the degree they wanted to, yes. like industry yeah. they wanted to go into. Because they do, like, minor and majors, don't they? Yeah. Like, I don't get I like it. the, I like the breadth, and I like the fact that... I guess it's almost like doing A-levels again, isn't it? You get, like, mm. lots more subjects, and then you can specialise in some and just keep some ticking over because you're interested in it. But I don't... But not everyone I'm, is any interested Americans, in... In that, like, if I was, if I know I want to go into film and TV and I go to uni to do film and TV, I don't want to be wasting my time studying law and biology. But you're a bit different though, Evie, because like I did biomed mm-hmm. and and I don't use science anymore. So I feel like it depends yeah. if you've got like a really specific, clear cut idea of what you want to do. I think it should be then, optional, maybe then. Mm, yeah. But, I feel um, like for you, it wouldn't make sense to do so many, like, no. you know, like, marketing or, like, biology. But for me, where I would have loved to do, like, a few film and TV things, because I find it interesting. I wouldn't want to do a career in it, but it's interesting. Yeah. It would probably be a bit more, like, I guess, intellectually stimulating. Like, my optional modules in third year, I was buzzing to do something that wasn't science. <laughs> but, like... I knew either way I wasn't going to do, like, science or this optional module as, like, my end career. Yeah. Um, Okay, so that's your, that's your, like, workload. Yeah, because, well, because also the the type of work they give you. So I don't know how your degree was, but my degree was very much, like, you only have, so it's all coursework based, at least my degree was, and you only have, like, maybe two assignments And they're due in at the end of the semester and they're like your big assignments, you're working up to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, So you don't really have anything to do. Maybe a couple of plans here and there that you show your professor of like what you're going to write about in your essay. That's kind of it. So you're kind of spending the first six to nine weeks of the semester doing the learning and then you put it into practice in your essay. And you're quite isolate the whole way through. It's just yeah. kind of like self-driven, right? Yeah, and you pick whatever topic you want to do. Like, that was what my degree was like. In America, yeah. you have ho- homework, is what they call it, every week. Like, every like I had it every week. A different case study for a different class each week. Um, and it was more work in the sense that coming from me, who's done the past two and a half years at uni of not really doing any work for the first nine weeks of uni (laughs) to then having to work every week and hand something in every week it it was like being back at school but yeah so anyway overall my answer is I would rather do uni in England again I mean it's it is difficult because I did enjoy my semester abroad of course but I think the enjoyment for me came from being in a new country being in a city I'd always wanted Mm -hmm. to go to meeting new people like the class the, I mean, the classes were easier. It was easy to get good marks. I mean, on my final assignment, or I don't know what they call them, or finals, don't they call them finals? I think so. Yeah. Um, on that, for my media ethics class, I somehow got 102 out of 100 on that. Which, like, that... Uh, how can they give you more marks than... Uh, anyway. But, so, whereas in England, like, if you're getting 70%, you are doing well. Like, that is a good Oh, my word, yeah. If you get a first, you're like, I don't care if it's 70 or 91, I got a first. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) If you hit 70, that's a first. Um, Whereas in America, if you got a 70, that would be, like, a C, maybe. Mm. Which is crazy. um, Yeah, so I I prefer... I felt like I gained more, obviously, from my British degree because I felt the stuff was more stimulating and relevant and useful. But I I guess you could say I enjoyed the content more in America, but that was probably just because it was easier and more, you know, who doesn't want to recast their favourite TV show for an assignment, you know? Over writing a 3,000-word essay on, you know, feminism in TV shows. So I think... What I take home from that, I mean, I I only have the fantasy of what America is and I've only ever been to a UK university. Newcastle, absolutely adored, would never change. Um, but I think if I was to do something different, I definitely would have done a semester abroad. 
um, they only just introduced a semester abroad the year that I joined. So it was very, very like... In, mm. Infant in its like yeah. development. Like it had, it didn't have deep roots like say other courses like English or courses where you, like languages where it's almost like a given that you go abroad. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of glad that I didn't go abroad. Otherwise I'd be in my third year now. No, thank yeah. you. Yeah. um but I think what you've gained from America even if it wasn't you know as as challenging as you thought it would be you've got those like you met people from different places you've been to places you never thought you'd be or Mm -hmm. you did think you'd be but like not so early on yeah um and you've just like been exposed to a whole new way of life which I I'm very envious of and wish I'd done. Yeah. I don't necessarily think I would have picked America. I probably would have picked somewhere like Australia or Spain or Mm -hmm. somewhere a bit... But having said that, I wouldn't exactly turn down an American university if I (laughs) was said that I could go there. Um, But it's interesting. I think... I think... I think the take-home would definitely be if you're considering a semester abroad... I don't think you can knock it at all, yeah. No. Evie only ever blows about... You've just got (laughs) nothing to lose. Like, you've got everything to gain, nothing to lose, so... There are quite a few stereotypes and expectations surrounding Mm. university that I think need to be shattered. Especially in the first year. Because... Oh, yeah. Because... Yeah. So many people go with this, like, idea because of films, because of books, because of shows on the tv that like you meet your friends for life you always have the best time Mm -hmm. um and that's not really the reality and obviously in hindsight like why on earth would we think that but it's quite easy to get wrapped up in this romanticized version of university yeah so why did you go to university um i think for me i mean we mentioned in one of our other episodes that i was torn between doing film and tv and criminology and for Mm -hmm. both of those kind of industries I had the idea in my head that it would be beneficial and kind of necessary for me to have some sort of qualification in those industries to be able to progress into that profession um and now now having graduated it it slightly irritates me that that at the time it maybe it was because I didn't look or they just weren't as popular but there are like apprenticeships in film and tv and things like that that you can do as soon as you leave school Mm -hmm. again again i i think it's difficult for the both of us because we did go to a school that was very much like go to university Uh, yeah it was the only option i don't think we we weren't advertised apprenticeships we weren't advertised what's the thing where it's not a university degree but it is some sort of degree um like a b-tech yeah, I guess so. Or is that similar or, to A levels? I don't know. I feel like that's similar to A levels, but there's definitely something that's like almost like you can, or even like a part time qualification, or like an open university. Like, why did you have to go to university? I think, although a great school, and they've definitely helped us both get into great universities and progress in so many ways, that are, are, we're very fortunate. They weren't so open to the idea that not everyone goes to a Russell group, not everyone goes to Oxbridge. Yeah. If you didn't go to Oxbridge or Durham or Warwick, you know, you were definitely, like, less prioritised. And that's yeah. not a slight against the school because you do need to work harder to get into those universities and not everyone wants to go to those universities and it is more specialised and specific. But I do think there's a whole piece on, especially now they're being pushed so much and apprenticeships have come leaps and bounds from when we were in like primary school. Yeah. Why isn't that an acceptable route into into the career that you want? Yeah. Like, I know. I think, I think it is. I mean, I see a lot of people like just on Instagram that I follow who are in the film and TV industry who are younger than me and who, you know, I assume have done apprenticeships that have helped them you know a part of me thinks oh maybe Mm -hmm. I should have just done an apprenticeship and maybe that would have helped me get into the industry quicker but as I say at the time I didn't know that that was a thing I didn't know if they were any good you just as I say the school didn't really say anything so for me the next best option was to do a degree in it and to be honest our school again had no kind of subjects 
that related to film and TV. We didn't have media studies, photography, nothing. The closest thing to film and TV that we could study at school was drama, and they are very different things. Oh, um, yeah, so true. So, so for me, it, it wasn't a big deal that I was going to study film and TV at uni because actually, like, I'd never studied it before. So actually, I was kind of excited it was going to be interesting. I knew it was going to help me. So there weren't really any negatives t- for me to go to uni to study it, so... That was my reasoning, but I know your journey to uni was slightly different, so... My my journey to university? Oh, that's such a nice way of putting it. Um, yeah, but so, it, what, else, what else am I going to call it? It was a journey. I like, learn a lot. It, yeah. was, it was a journey. I don't mean like we a journey in like a negative sense. I mean like a journey as in like... I don't know, you just had... I you learned took a, a different lot about path. myself. Yeah. yeah. Um... So in year 13, I was kind of dead set on medicine, on being a doctor. Um, You get three choices for medicine and two like alternatives. So I think most people that did medicine put biomed as their second choice. So that was my first like introduction to a world of biomed. But I was quite stubborn. I was quite naive, to be perfectly honest. Um... And I kind of gun ho went ahead, went ahead, went ahead. Um, faced rejection, which in any form, in job applications, in universities, in 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 love life, to be perfectly honest, is heart wrenching. Mm. And I felt emotions that I think at such a young age you are not able to process. Um, so I took a year out um and I did and I finished another A level so I finished my religious education A level so I've got four A levels and one AS um and I applied to biomed because I was like you know what things happen for a reason I can't do exams anymore my final year of A levels almost killed me I think Evie knows I don't do well under stress yeah (laughs) I I withdraw, I, I, I make myself ill and I think everyone experiences that in some way or another. It's just how you manifest that stress. Mm. Um, so I was like, right, I can't do five years of medicine because I will go absolutely bananas. Um, what is the closest thing and what do I enjoy doing? I loved uh, biology. To be perfectly honest, I love chemistry, but I think that was just due to fantastic teachers and A-levels. Dr. Webb, who I had a crush on. <laughs> um, that just needs to be said for the record and Evie's giggling because I think everyone thought that was a bit of a weird one. Um, and yeah, so biomed. And I wanted I wanted to get as far away from home as possible. So I think first time around when I applied to medicine, I didn't apply to anything further than maybe Nottingham like we did your Exeter's your Bristol's your quite like southern universities second time around I was like I want to have a completely clean slate nothing new uh, no, no nothing um nothing that I've already done so we applied to Liverpool Manchester I think I did Bristol again Newcastle and Durham as far away from home as possible um and I got into Newcastle which was amazing and I could understand why so many people were so happy when they got their offers in the first time around because there was such a pride and like I'd worked for that and I had did that I did I'd done that Mm -hmm. god you can tell I didn't do English (laughs) um so yeah I kind of trotted off did biomed had a year of like learning a lot about myself um was very thankful not to do five years of of exams because three years killed me. Um, and I was ready to go to the workplace come my third year. Um, I would say take advantage of stuff. I wish I'd done more clubs. I wish I'd done more societies. Um, but equally, do what's right for you at the time. Should we go into talking about stereotypes of being at uni or before you go to uni, what you think it's going to be like and kind of Mm. the first couple of weeks, I think, at least for me, were pretty like... Whirlwind. Yeah. 
I remember calling you crying yeah. one night, but we'll, we'll get into oh, that. My heartbreak. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to kick it off? Because I think. I think you've got a good understanding and explanation of the stereotypes to be honest well okay so everyone who goes to uni will know about freshers week freshers week is like the first week of uni or sometimes even the first week before classes start um and it's basically a week where there's like they i think they like to call them events but yeah. what they mean <laughs> what they mean is parties basically club nights every night yes you know yes there's things happening on during the day you can go around and get freebies discounts that was like the highlight rinse rinse that Literally. Domino's pizza giving us free pizza was the best thing ever oh my god we as a house went round and did it in second year <laughs> and third year so it was like we weren't missing out on that um but yeah so freshers week for me was like overwhelming because i was in a flat of 12 and oh, wow. there was a group of people in the flat who were very much like club goers, heavy drinkers, staying up till four in the morning, very loud. Um, and I am not like that at all. So Freshers Week was kind of overwhelming because I think, I oh my gosh, I'll never forget this one moment. I think it was this the Saturday or the Sunday and my parents had, I moved in the Saturday actually, and I think it was the Saturday night and I'd gone out for dinner with my parents because it was like one of the last nights obviously that I was yeah. going to be with them and I remember getting a message from I think it was Kai or Sophie two of my housemates who I kind of clicked with being like where are you and I was like oh I'm out for dinner with my parents and and they were like oh okay well we're all sat in the kitchen around the table just like chatting and I was like oh okay and so I I get back from dinner into the flat and I'm like oh god like do I have to go in and so I had to walk into the kitchen with my 11 other housemates just sat around the table who I'd never like I'd met Sophie but I don't think I'd really talked to or met any of the others and I just like had to walk in and they were like and one of them was like oh so were you out for dinner with your parents that's cute and I was like yeah and it was just like from that moment I was like oh god this I'm so out of my depth here like like being at a school for 14 years where you know everyone going to university where you don't know anyone yeah um and walk and, and you did know one person that. yeah our other best friend ella niche went there as well yeah and she was actually in the flat below me i think um no, no way. which was kind of funny yeah um but yeah so i remember from that moment of walking into that room and ev- all eyes just turned to me as i entered the kitchen and that's, and that's not a bit of you at all no and it was and like having to walk in and like introduce yourself and like they asked where i was from and i was like oh from portsmouth and obviously like they no one had a clue where that was and i was like oh well yeah. do you know where the isle of wight is because it's like the other side of the sea to that and they had no idea where the isle of wight <laughs> was either so that was just great i was just like trying to like dig this hole where i was trying to explain I'm where there. i was from yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that was kind of that. And then came, as I say, Freshers Week with the drinking and stuff. And I think I went out twice maybe in Freshers Week, but it wasn't, Mm -hmm. I was kind of just, and this is where it's like, a part of me is like, like it wasn't traumatic and terrible, but I know that had I done what I wanted to do, I would have stayed in my room or just met up with Ella, who is our other best friend who went to the same uni and just watched a movie or something but obviously for most people freshers week you do go out and you party and you get drunk and you make friends and you latch on to people who you think are going to be your friends for the whole of uni and turns out they're not you're just latching on to people because it's the first week and so yeah yeah, uh, it's difficult for me to say because most people our age do drink and do like clubbing and that's not Mm -hmm. massively high on my priority list not to say I don't ever do it but I probably have four other things I'd rather do than that. Yeah. And also it depends on my mood. Sometimes I I want to go out. Like sometimes, like, I don't know. So for me, that, that whole idea of getting drunk and that doesn't appeal to me massively. So Freshers Week was, was interesting. But other than that, getting past that, I mean, the, uh, the only other hardest part was, as I say, half of our flat were like big drinkers, like going out three nights a week um and being so loud i had two i think or three 9 a.m's in my first year and when people are keeping you up till 5 a.m 
it's hard not to cry in your room. Yes. So um, it was. Um, I mean, I won't lie. It was rough. Like it, uh, there were times when it was so hard, and I would have to message the flat chat, being like, "Can we? Can you guys please stop singing to Whitney Houston in the kitchen? It's four a.m. Like, please." And some of us have a nine a.m. We love the Queen, up. but stop. <laughs> I know. So it was. It was hard, and there were moments when I'd wake up in the middle of the night and hear security banging on our flat door for someone to open it because someone was passed out outside the door, and it just wasn't. That's not my scene at all so it was a big adjustment for me in that instance let alone trying to keep up with uni work and learning how to do references and things like that like at school we never really did that much in referencing we did nothing yeah so so it was a big adjustment for me but it just I don't know I think in the hindsight it's made me stronger and made me more confident in who I am but um yeah, that was kind of my experience in the first couple of weeks. But how was how was yours? Did you come like what was your view before you went on like stereotypes and drinking and all that? It was kind of interesting. Um Newcastle is crazy at freshers. They have a two week freshers and it's intense. It's not bad intense, but it is intense. Um I think you need to be kinder to yourself when going to university and you shouldn't compromise who you are. And I think it's amazing that you didn't get peer pressured into going on nights out because I think it is quite easy to get that FOMO, to be worried that you're not going to make friends if you don't go on these nights out, Mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I wasn't the biggest girl outer in freshers most of the time um, because I like going out with people I feel comfortable with. So once yeah, I had a good that's friend important, base, though. Like, that was when... The fact that you yeah. had that knowledge and you knew that was is so important because, like, going out with people you don't know and don't trust, especially in freshers... Things can is, go wrong. Things can go really wrong, especially if, with the peer pressure and feeling the need to drink when you perhaps don't want to drink and, you know, drinking games yeah. and feeling, oh, yeah, it's just a recipe for disaster. So I am much more like everyone talk around a table, have a night in, mm, yeah. go out for drinks, a bit more civilised. And then once I know them, I'm more than happy to go out. I know other people that are completely different. And I think it's really important to be to do what's comfortable for you. If in the moment you're like, yeah, I really want to go out with these people, do it, go for it. You'll make friends for life. That's not a bit of me. Um, and I think that's really important to remember. And don't try and be someone you're not because it Mm. will quickly catch up with you and you will feel shit. I think it's also super important, and Evie did this in Freshers and I did this in Freshers, to have that person you go to to go, look, I'm not having a great time, X, Y, and Z happened. And it makes you feel like you're home away from home. Like, I would call Evie and be like, you know, I'm finding it really hard to make friends. Um... Or, you know, all these people went on a night out and I feel left out or X, Y and Z. And we would work through the problems together and what can we do moving forward. And just remember, like, everyone's in the same position, all that kind of stuff. You just have to kind of have that person that you talk to who maybe isn't at your university or is at your university, but in a completely different part of university. So you can give each other advice who aren't in the situation because it's quite easy to be swayed in the situation. Yeah. And to also just be your, like, your go-to person to go, I feel a bit shit. Okay, that's fine. But then someone knows. I think it's really important to voice that and I think not enough people do. Yeah, and I think because going into uni, I think if you are going to uni in the coming years or whatever, I think you do have this kind of rose-coloured glasses perspective of it where you think it's going to be amazing sunshines and rainbows but actually I think it's important we are here to tell you that you are going to have challenges you are going to have days when you think why am I here what am I doing there you will try and be someone I'm sure everyone has had this whether you want to admit it or not you will try and be someone that you are not to fit into a certain situation oh yeah for sure which is everyone is trying to do that and you're all just in this new boat together trying to stay afloat and yeah rose tinted glasses sums it up yeah bravo thank you thank you very much um i was i won't lie when i was gonna say that i was like is that the is that the phrase or is it rose colored glasses or i don't know i was just like (laughs) just say it it'll be fine people will know what you mean (laughs) um should we we'll finish with our quote but i feel like before that yes let's just give a couple of like so as as we've said, Imogen went to Newcastle Uni. I went to the University of East Anglia yes. in Norwich. So let's give some like places to go there. Like My just a couple thing. of like hidden gems, restaurants, places, things to do. 
places I'm expecting Evie to take me when we can come out of this pandemic. Yeah. Because I want her to show me UEA. Do you know what I was thinking? Is our graduation actually going to happen this year? <laughs> Do we think? I don't think so. Oh. I think it's going to be next year. So... Oh. <sighs> Two years after we actually left uni. Can you imagine? But it's all right, because I'm hoping that your graduation will actually be in a different time frame to my graduation. Yeah, and then we can go to each other's. Um, yeah, that's right. Nice. Right, um, give me, your, okay, give me you some places with, and you, you go first, you go first. Okay. So, cake stories, Jesmond. Amazing for a cake and a coffee or a hot choc. Their hot choc is amazing. I'm a hot choc gal. Um, their cakes are phenomenal. They've got gluten-free and vegan. And my favourite one was both gluten-free and vegan and I didn't realise. Chocolate, peanut and caramel, by the way, if anyone's asking. Um, I'm writing these down because I do not want to forget these cake stories what's Where the one what's the dog? one um that we always see it might be cake stories that we see on instagram that had like those massive like milkshakes with like a brownie on top oh gb cupcakery that is good okay. but you feel like you are going to pass out afterwards i had a massive yeah, sugar crash imagine. to the point that um henry had to piggyback me home <laughs> <laughs> um oh um Quilliam's Tea Brothers is a really cute one to take parents or for a nice date or for a, um, a revision date. They do, they've got this book of teas, which isn't a bit of me, but they do amazing coffee and hot chocolate. Nice. And they've got nice snacks and sandwiches, which I really rate. Um, and then things like the beach, you've got Tynemouth. Go for a nice little stroll there with your house or with your fam. Um Go to Jesmond Dean for a nice walk. That always reminded me of home. Um, or just go to Edinburgh for the day. <laughs> Take advantage of being so far away from home and then utilising the like local areas. <gasps> Durham, 15 minute train away. And there is a place that does the most fantastic pancakes, which I am taking you to, by the way, Evie. Okay. Called, um, oh, is it Riverview Kitchen or Riverside Kitchen? <gasps> That was on my list to do before we left university in third year. Oh, it's so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so most of these are food places, I won't lie. Yeah. Um, I mean, quite a few of yeah. mine are food places too. <laughs> Hit me with yours. <laughs> okay, so I've made a list. So, um, it's not like a place. It, it's difficult. Okay, so in Norwich, Norwich is quite an old city and there's lots of cobbled streets and things and one of my yeah yeah one of my favorites is like it's a place called elm hill but there is kind of like this lane and you go up and it's cobbled and there's a church and it's so cute but they actually filmed jingle jangle a christmas journey Um, they filmed some of it in norfolk on those or in norwich on those streets cobbled streets love it um norwich castle um i have been inside norwich castle unless you have kids or like like history wouldn't necessarily recommend but the outside of it is beautiful and there's if you go up to the castle um there's like seating areas and you can look out over the city and you can walk around the outside of the castle and it's it's so nice so i'd recommend that um eaton park which isn't in the city it's actually nearer to the uni is really lovely for a dog walk just a run a random walk just there's a tea room there is that the one with the lake yeah well, it's got like <gasps> Can a... Can we go there? It's not like a lake. It's like a... I don't know what you'd call it. Like a bath? Oh, so like is that not where you things. used to do your runs? It is where I used Was to do all... my runs. But I also used to run at the uni round the lake. I think campus. that's the one that I'm thinking of. Yeah. See, that's just on campus. So that's just like, you know. Um, okay, and then another beach. You mentioned a beach, so I'll say a beach too. Um, Horsey Beach, highly recommend. They have <gasps> seals. Obviously, if you have dogs, be careful because we took our dogs there and there were seals in the water. And our dogs love, yeah, our dogs love to swim. And we we knew it was a beach that had seals, but we didn't think they weren't. You on thought they'd the be sand. like further out. Yeah, they weren't on the sand. We couldn't initially see any in the water, so the dogs like ran towards the sea and they got probably up to like their legs and then we saw like the seals bobbing in the water and we were like dogs <laughs> get out get out <laughs> um so <clears throat> if you have dogs be careful 
Um, <laughs> but if you don't have dogs, go and look at the little seals and it's a sandy beach. It's beautiful. Um, oh, we are going to have to do a week in away, Norfolk, I you and I. And I was, then I feel like we might need four days for Newcastle so we can do like Edinburgh because we yeah. need to do Edinburgh properly because that is cobbled and you will love because there are little like passageways that are just... I love that. You could just wander around the city forever and I know that's exactly oh. what you'd want to do. Yeah, I would. I'd be taking pictures left, right and centre. <laughs> um, and then two eating places that I love. that I Actually, I haven't eaten at one, but as you said, it was on our list your as a list. house to go and do before we had to come home because of covid Ooh. but that is erpingham house and it's like a vegan place and it's so instagrammable they have like pink flowers around the outside it's so it just looks nice. so aesthetic and the food apparently is so good as well so i need to go there and then my other just favorite place in norwich is called gonzo's and it is basically oh, you've mentioned this yeah um and it's the food is so good but it's funny because you wouldn't like when we first went there we obviously did it on google maps looked at where it was and we turned up and we were like this like there's nothing here we see the sign for gonzo's but it was literally like a doorway in into no like way. a building with like shop, other shops either side we were like what the heck like do we just walk through this door and thankfully people went in before us so we walked yeah. in and you like walk in and you keep going and then you walk in and it's almost like it kind of reminds me of like a dive bar speakeasy kind of a like vibe I it's love very that. dark there's like lights all over the wall um they have like a projector that sometimes plays random clips and things it's like so just crazy and they also now have a rooftop um <gasps> seating area which we didn't know about when we were there um because it only opens i think from like april time maybe like when it gets obviously the weather gets nicer okay so we never managed to go there but i i need to go to the rooftop and sit and okay eat. And so i'm food. thinking oh. we do a date weekend you and i yeah because let's be honest i'm your husband um <laughs> and we go like summertime we wear those yeah. nice dresses we drink some cocktails on the roof yeah we wander down by the sea we take pics of the seals we have a hot chalk can we go to the jungle cafe by the way yes yes we can urban jungle yes that's not in the urban city jungle. but it's oh. yeah it's that i would also i nearly put that on the list but i thought i don't know if we're sticking just to the city or like norwich or norfolk as a whole you know there's also and i need to ask niche about this mm-hmm. um she posted this like it looked like a really cute little cafe which had like nice looking cakes and like fancy looking china i really i mean that there. could be anywhere in norwich there are so many <laughs> like nice cafes and yeah cafes in norwich and coffee shops are incredible there's Next so many level. independent ones as well which is so lovely um yeah. oh i love that yeah okay well we'll just like trot our way into the quote um and because it's been university it's education based so it's nelson mandela And I have checked it this week. Um, (laughs) Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Which I love. Yeah, Yeah, I like that. So I think our topic next week is going to be dreams, aspirational people, um, people that have inspired us. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I was going to say thanks for having me, but like, this is our podcast. <laughs> this is ours. <laughs> it's like when you go, it's like when you um, go through a drive through or something and someone's like, oh, um, here you go, here's your food, like, enjoy your food. And you're like, yeah, yeah you too. You too. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, anyway, right. I will see you next oh, week. Oh, love it. Bye. Bye.